Hello friends, this video on locomotion and movement part 5 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let us look at smooth muscle tissue. So these muscle tissues controls the involuntary movements of the body. For example, there are certain movements which take place in our body which are not under our control. So we just cannot say that, okay, stop here and start now. So that is not under our will. So they, that is why these muscles are also known as involuntary muscles. They are generally located in the inner walls of body organs for example the digestive tract or the reproductive tract now the process of digestion do you think that you have a control on the process of digestion for example you eat food now can you tell your digestive tract that okay stop now do not digest the food right away digest it after 10 minutes you don't have that control and that is why these are involuntary muscles. However, throughout the digestive tract, if you remember the uh, digestive system when we discussed that, I told you that a process called peristalsis takes place inside the digestive tract. When the food moves down the food pipe, peristalsis takes place. That is the movement or contraction of the muscles which are present on the walls of the digestive tract. And because of that, the food is propelled to move downwards. So this movement occurs in the food pipe as well as in the stomach as well as the intestine. So this happens because of the presence of these smooth muscle tissues on the walls of the digestive tract. And these muscle tissues are capable of performing peristalsis. So similarly, these type of muscle tissues are also present inside the reproductive tract, which helps in the movement of the uh, gametes. They are also known as unstriated muscles, very simple because they do not have the striations and what were the striations? The ordinary dark and light bands. So the, those bands are not present in the smooth muscle tissue. That is why they are called unstriated muscles. So let us quickly look at their structure. They are spindle shaped cells. That is what is spindle? What is the shape of a spindle? Something like this. So this is how a spindle looks like. So it is elongated but with pointed ends. So thin elongated with pointed ends. So this is how it looks like. So here you can see each cell is in the shape of a spindle. So this is one particular muscle cell for a smooth muscle. They are uninucleate. That is one cell has one nucleus. So this is the nucleus. So each cell, each spindle shaped cell has just one nucleus. So they are uninucleate cells. If you talk about their function, they help in the movement of food along the digestive tract. For example, the food pipe, this is the food pipe, this is the stomach and then this is the intestine. So in all these places you have, internally you have these muscles because of which peristalsis take place which propels the food to move down the digestive tract. It also helps in contraction and relaxation of the blood vessels. Now when we talked about the circulatory system, we saw that the blood vessels contract and expand to control the flow of blood. So this contraction and expansion is also due to the presence of the smooth muscle tissues inside the blood vessels. So smooth muscle tissues are present generally inside the organs of our body and that is why they are not under our control and they are called involuntary muscles. Movement of gametes through the genital tract and that is the role it plays in the reproductive tract of human beings. Let us now look at the third type of muscle tissue called the cardiac muscles. The term cardiac is related to heart. So the muscles which are present in the heart, human heart are called cardiac muscles. So these are also known as heart muscles. So heart. Heart has a uniqueness in itself that is it is able to beat continuously without being controlled by the nervous system and that happens due to the presence of these muscles on the walls of the heart. So unique muscles found only in the walls of the heart. So these type of muscles are present only in heart and nowhere else in the body. So that means you can say abundance wise are, these are quite less abundant because it is present only in heart. They are responsible for rhythmic contraction and relaxation of heart throughout life. And this rhythmic contraction and relaxation is independent of the nervous system. Now there are communication junctions 
at certain some fusion points uh, which allow the cells of the heart to contract as a unit. Now, when one cell receives a signal to contract, its neighbors are also stimulated to contract. You remember we spoke about the SA node, right? That is, the SA node is, is a signal which is generated in the right auricle and then it travels to all the other chambers of the heart and they actually initiate this process of contraction. So, the contraction and relaxation of the different chambers of the heart, it also takes place due to the presence of these unique muscles. Had these muscles been not there, there would have been no contraction and expansion. So, if you look at their structure, their structure are like intermediate between the skeletal muscles and the smooth muscles. They have few similarities with the skeletal muscles, whereas few other similarities with the smooth muscles. So, that is why they are kind of intermediate between the uh, skeletal as well as the smooth muscles. So, in what way they are similar to skeletal muscles? Because they have striations. So, striations are present, but at the same time, the striations are not that prominent. So, here you can see that the surface is not very smooth. Some sort of bands are present, but you cannot actually identify them very distinctly that which band is dark and which band is light. So, the bands are not very prominent, but striations are present. They are uninucleate, which is a similarity with the smooth muscles because skeletal muscles are multinucleate. So, this is a similarity with the smooth muscles. These are involuntary muscles as they are not controlled by the nervous system. So as I mentioned this before also, here the contraction and relaxation is initiated by the pacemaker that is the SA node, the sinoatrial node, which arises from the auricle. So, it is not under our control so we do not say our heart to start beating or to stop beating so that is no absolutely not under our control and that is why these are also involuntary muscles so if you see they have some similarities with smooth muscles whereas some other similarities with the skeletal muscles so now let us have a quick comparison between the three types of muscle tissue skeletal smooth and cardiac so if you talk about the skeletal muscles, they are striated, that is alternate dark and light bands are seen in the muscle fibers, whereas smooth muscles, they are non-striated, no striations at all. And cardiac muscles, they are striated, but they are not so prominent. Skeletal muscles are voluntary, but smooth and cardiac muscles are involuntary, that is they are not under our control. Skeletal muscles, structure-wise, they are long cylindrical cells, and multinucleate, whereas smooth muscles are spindle shaped cells, uninucleate. Cardiac muscles are cylindrical branched cells, which are uninucleate. So, here also, if you see, this is in the shape of a cylinder, cylinder like structure which, with one nucleus per cell, and they also have a branched structure. So, if you see this cylinder like structure, it branches off to give another cylinder like structure. So, because of this, it is said to have a branched structure of cells. So, this was a quick comparison between the skeletal smooth and cardiac muscles. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.